Good afternoon. So, um, one of the biggest things I've noticed over the last few years is that um, lots of you will often lose marks, not because you lack the knowledge, but because you you don't necessarily always understand the exam question. Okay, and I think it's it all comes down to understanding the command word or the instruction set by the exam board. So on the on the screen here, you can see a list of command words that have been used by both exam boards we study at a school, which is Edexcel for Key Stage Five and A Level, and QA for GCSE and Key Stage Four. Um, so I thought the best way to do this is to give you an example of a question for each command word to help you understand the command word and therefore understand what the examiners are looking from you okay so the first um word we're going to look at is the word to identify when you identify you need to select a piece of information and provide that identify questions are usually always one mark because they tend to be really straightforward the case here being identify the grade square in which gradient of the land is steepest grids you know that the closer grid references the grid reference closest the contour lines are together the steeper the land okay so you can clearly see that in um you've got a height point of the 325 meters the contour lines around um this area are really steep and ultimately based on the the um rule of along the corridors and up the stairs you can see that this is uh, grid line 11 so this one will be 10 this one is 44 so the one before is going to be 43 so the grid square you're looking for is going to be 10 43 okay nice and easy one uh, is one mark the next uh, instruction there is to calculate. When you calculate something, you usually always have a um, two mark answer, mainly because you get a mark for the answer and a mark for uh, sometimes the reasoning or a mark for um, the data you provide. Okay, so in this case here, it's a bit of an odd question, but it says calculate the increase in mango imports in the US uh, into the US between 1990 and 2010. 1990 here, we're looking at about uh, 50. Um, I, I think the Graph, I screenshotted it, but I think it's in tons, let's say 50 tons. And in 2010, we're looking at about 325 tons. Um, so ultimately, you give those two numbers and you say, well, the difference between the two, you use a calculator, you work it out, and it's about 273, 270 um, tons. Okay, awesome, brilliant, you get the two marks. Okay, um, next one there, outline. Similarly, it's only going to be for low mark questions. Uh, outline one reason why some countries have limited food supply. Um, the biggest, biggest, biggest mistake people might make here is that they outline one reason and they literally just say something along the lines of a drought. Um, yeah, that's a mark, but you, you have two marks. You need to say a drought would reduce the amount of food available by destroying crop supplies. Boom, you've explained it. You, you've given me a little bit more information. Okay, don't just list a point because it would say list outline. You have to give an account the basic characteristics of something. So tell me the drought and tell me how it would reduce food supply okay um when you describe again some usually there you're looking at about two marks describe is to give an account of the characteristics of something so it's just tell the examiner what you see hence the kind of picture of an eye in there if you had to describe the map the question says describe the distribution of countries which have five to nineteen percent of the population undernourished five to nineteen percent on the key down there is in yellow if you look at the kind of countries that have an undernourished population if you describe the distribution okay distribution of how they're spread you'd say well the spread in predominantly asia and south america okay uh, so you say the, the countries that have a proportion of population that is undernourished between five and nineteen percent are you say america south american countries such as brazil um and um well, it's colombia and and um and venezuela lovely that'd be one mark and then you say and countries in asia such as china uh what do we have there we've got uh, china we've got Myanmar, we've got indonesia okay lovely great two marks made two points okay that's your for two mark describe just say what you see on the map don't explain why just say what you see so if you justify tends to ask a little bit more uh, thinking, uh, so therefore you get a few more points from that. Uh, it says here, for example, justify one primary data collection method used in your physical geography inquiry. So that's very much field trip based at Key Stage 4 and 5. In this case here, you have to pick one primary data collection methods. There's a few here. You can do uh, the observation, you could do secondary data, you could do tests, questionnaires, interviews, focus group. I'll just give those an example. But to justify, you need to support your case. You need to back it up. You need to prove, you need to explain why you chose that method and how it was useful so you say for example justify a uh, questionnaire you'd say i selecting questionnaire would be useful uh would be a useful uh, strategy because because it's a physical geography inquiry it's unlikely a question will be useful because you obviously uh 
measuring rivers, etc. So it's potentially more likely to be more Olympic a test. And you'll say, well, actually, a test is more suited because physical geography requires uh, measuring um, physical processes and physical landscapes. Um, and it allows you to get accurate measurements of an area. Okay, so primary data is data you collect yourself. Okay, and tests would allow you to bring evidence that we'd then be able to use in more detail. So justify us to tell me what assist collection method did you use? Why did you use it? And how was it appropriate? Okay, so you tell me the test. Tell me what a test is. So a mark for a test, what it is. A mark for an example and a mark for what or why it's a positive um, positive or useful um, method. Okay, so um, when you compare, Usually that requires always to form up comparisons because comparisons will often require you to compare apples and pears or oranges and banana. It'll ask you to compare two different components. In this case, two population pyramids, one of the USA on the left, one of Niger on the right. If you have to compare, you have to give similarities and differences. Okay, so in this case, you could look at the USA and tell me, right, I can, you can clearly see that the similarities are they've got an even split between male and female uh, because that's the sex uh, given at birth or given assigned at birth so it tends to be pretty much 50 50. um you could also say um that um we've got a slight difference is that um nigeria's got a really young population really high birth rate because it's got a really wide base life expectancy is lower than the usa because you can see after about 85 you don't have many people who survived that age in nigeria in 2017 as in the us you can go, you go pretty with women, live longer, and there's quite a few as percentage that are, or quite a few, 0.1% that are between 95 and 99. Okay, so compare, you have to mention both countries, you have to mention similarities and differences, and you have to use some data. Okay, that's what a comparison is asking you to do. Next one, when you look at uh, suggest, when you suggest something, you have to uh, present possible cases or reasons about an issue. Okay, try and link it and try and use words like this means that as a result of this. Okay, so for example, suggest two ways that the level of economic development of a country might affect the quality of life of its people. So you need two ways, four marks. You get a mark per way and a mark per explanation of that way in which economic development improves quality of life. So one of them could be economic growth allows people to get um, high pay. When they get high pay, they get um, more income to bring home. Therefore, they can spend more money on um and the quality of the house on the education uh, on their diet okay um so you give me a, a reason why economic growth is good and tell me explain to me how it's good okay so suggestion not necessarily mean you're correct or you 100 percent right you have to back it up you just have to make an assumption and suggest an idea to the examiner okay when you explain similarly you've got four marks when you explain uh explain is this similar to describe and often people get them confused describe you only say what you see so in this case i can see flooding explain is you have to tell me why it's flooded okay so you have to give a you give reasons why saying as a result this means that okay so in this case explain the likely economic effects of river flooding on an area shown in figure 15 this is figure 15 you could say well explain the likely economic effects um some businesses will be flooded as a result um insurance claims will be will have to be claimed insurance premiums might have to go up OK, uh, you could say that some let's say it looks like a warehouse or even the baseball air uh, stadium. Baseball areas a uh, stadium is quite well protected, but clearly you're not going to be able to play baseball that day. That's got loss of revenue for the club. Therefore, there's less um, money being spent in the local economy. OK, don't tell me things that you can't see. So don't say I can see that a business has um, has has been uh, destroyed. It's like, well, we don't really necessarily know that. You have, give me examples, make assumptions of um, based on what you see. OK, you can also say um, evacuation, evacuation might be tricky. So money might have to be more money might have to be spent on emergency services to help people out. OK, um, so use a picture. Tell me two reasons. Explain me why in more detail. OK, um, the next one we have is to examine when you examine a, um, a figure you, that's a, a usually a much longer uh, answer. So it's, we're looking about a six mark answer. Okay, so here you have to examine the advantages and disadvantages of large scale water transfer scheme that you have studied. I've got you've got a picture here of water transfer schemes in the UK. If you explain the advantages and disadvantages, you have to uh, you examine. Sorry, you have to look in close detail. Okay, you have to give some facts, give some detail. So you have to pick one of those. For example, so Kilda res Reservoir is the one we do as a case study. You need to pick Kilda Reservoir. Tell me in close detail. What are the benefits? What are the negatives? You need to bring data, you need to bring evidence and factual knowledge to your answer. 
okay examine you're doing this in itty gritty detail i need plenty of data in these answers okay it ultimately it'd be great to have at least two advantages at least two disadvantages that you explain in more depth for a six mark answer okay uh, similarly, when you assess something, assess the effectiveness of your data collection methods. Uh, when you assess, is I use the expression, if you sit on the fence, especially with the first part of the word assess, you're sat on the fence, you're looking at both sides. So you have to tell me, the, you have to weigh things up, you have to tell me the pros and the cons. So in the case of here, you could say, right, examples of primary data, examples of secondary data. So you could say, right, the advantage, the, assess the effectiveness of data collection. You say, well, the, the effectiveness of primary data is that I've collected it myself. Um, interviews, you get a really good in-depth in understanding of people's opinions. Um, however, they take an awful lot of time and some of the data might not necessarily be accurate. You might've collected yourself, but you might've collected it wrong. Okay. And you'd say on the other hand, secondary data can be uh, a lot cheaper to, uh, to collect. Uh, it sometimes will be much more expertise in the people who collected it were experts at that. However, it can be biased, etc. So you have to give me the pros and cons of your, um, of your data collection methods you have to mention more than one in this case obviously ideally for six marks you do three okay um we're getting closer towards the end there we've got another six mark question that says discuss the effects of urban sprawls on people and the environment use figure three in a case study of a major city in the uk uh when you discuss something it's like a debate you have to give me both sides okay so in this case uh discuss the effects that can be positive and negatives okay and you have to talk about people and social effects and environmental so, um, so that natural effects. So in this case, I probably would look at having two paragraphs, one where you tell me the pros and the cons of urban sport on people, and one where you give me the pros and the cons of on the environment. So you dis you look at two sides of the argument for two different components. Okay. Funny in the long what questions, when you have to what extent is highly, 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 highly likely. Those will always be nine mark questions. Um, at, at A level, that's pretty much all you get um, for your 12 marks, 20 mark questions. Okay, to what extent? It's basically asking you how much do you agree with the statement. Okay, so it means you have going to have to give an argument. You're going to have to give a counter argument. You're going to have to give your overall opinion and conclusion. So to what extent is your chosen environment at risk of human activity? I've got a picture here of a desert. The human activity is desert. Oh, human activity. Human activity, such as you can see the camels there, overgrazing, leading to uh, desertification. I want you to tell me right how at risk is the area, and so ultimately that's when you use your peace paragraph. Okay, so if you want more on peace paragraph, there's we've recorded a video on that um, specifically for you. Uh, but you make a point, you give evidence, you analyze that evidence, you give a counter argument, and you evaluate it. Okay, and for nine mark, you need at least two peace paragraphs. Um, for 12 mark at A level, you need two piece paragraphs with more than one point in each point section. And for 20, 20 mark, you need three piece paragraphs. Okay. But to what extent is how much do you agree? And it's near impossible you'll always 100% agree. So never just go, I fully agree. You can't because some people will disagree with you and you have to acknowledge them. We live in a society where people don't listen to one another. We need to learn to do that. Even if you don't agree with them, you need to show their show that other people might disagree, how they might disagree. And you have to then, if you want to, counter argument, they counter argument. That's fine. But you have to acknowledge that you're not the only person in the world. OK. Um, and then the final one, um, I think this final one is evaluate the success or likely success of one of more strategies to re resolve regional differences in the UK. Evaluate means you have to describe the pros and cons of something. Again, make a judgment. So I need your opinion there somewhere. Okay. I've got a lovely picture there of HS2's plan. You say evaluate the success or likely success of a strategy to reduce regional difference. HS2 will connect northern the UK to southern, southern UK. Tell me the pros, tell me the cons, pick another strategy. And then tell me overall, I believe this, this strategy is better than the other because, okay. So that's how it kind of works. Again, these are piece paragraphs, same structure to your, to what extent, give me the positives, counterbalance it with the counter argument. So pros, then cons, pick another strategy, do the same. In your conclusion, you tell me which one you prefer. Okay. Or which one you think would be bring most success. And then the final slide is very much on a, sometimes you don't necessarily have a clear command word, but it might say something uh, along the lines of using figure two and your own knowledge using figure one what i need you to do there is a ha if it says using figure one study figure one you have to refer to it in your answer you need to bring some data so in this case you can see name of plates you can see direction of plate movement you have to say in figure two i can see that in figure one shows that you have to make that reference that's your a03 is you're bringing information from that figure if it's the figure's pointless they wouldn't have it in an exam it's there because it provides useful information okay um and then it, 
so that's for the one map. Use data from the map. If it says using figure to and your own knowledge, use the figure, but add your own knowledge to it. Okay, bring your own case studies, back up the figure and the data it gives you with your own knowledge and your own case studies. Okay, I hope all this helps. Hopefully you've seen uh, it's kind of a bit crescendo. It starts with one, two, three markers, and then we go at four, six, and we look at finish on nines. Uh, but uh, hopefully all of these little slides show you how to answer command words and how to therefore never misunderstand an exam question. Okay, if you've got any questions, obviously don't hesitate to ask your teachers.